the first time they ever got together was in 1929 in Atlantic City. This was the first time that all the mob bosses from all over the country convened in one spot. So what was discussed at this conference? And like I say, the birth of Cosa Nostra in America, the modern day Cosa Nostra. What was discussed? Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is very good, very blessed on this end. And as always, I give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. Before I get into uh, the subject matter today, please subscribe if you can. We're on a march to a million. We're almost there. I promise you a huge giveaway when we hit a million. You'll be uh, starting to hear about it soon. Jump on if you can, subscribe. I know we'll uh, continue to give you good content. I was recently upstate New York. I was speaking at a, uh, a friendly pastor's church. Uh, Mike Savello is his name. The church is Redeemer Church. Got about four or five campuses. I've been up there probably five times in the last 10 years. Great people. And one of the gentlemen there was talking to me uh, about my upcoming appearance in Atlantic City on November 19th at Resorts uh, International Casino and Hotel. And uh, he had lived in Atlantic City, and he's saying to me, Michael, isn't it ironic that you're going to speak in Atlantic City, a city that was once controlled by the mob in many, many ways? He said, I don't know if anybody, you know, like that has ever spoken it anywhere in, in Atlantic City. And I said, you know, probably not. It, it might be a first. We just got into the conversation about how the mob once controlled Atlantic City and went all the way back to Nookie uh, Johnson and all of that. We were talking about it, and I kind of reminisced, and I thought it would be pretty interesting interesting to, uh, to give you my take on it today. So that's going to be the subject matter. You know, I don't know if you know the history of, of how the mob got involved in Atlantic City, but let me go way back and tell you. It was uh, May of 1929. There was a conference, actually a conference in Atlantic City that was called by Lucky Luciano. Now, why did this happen? It was probably about three months after the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. You're all familiar with that, when Capone did his deal and killed seven uh, of his opposition at that time. And violence was, uh, you know, all over the country at that point in time. We were in the heart of prohibition. A lot of kind of gang warfare was going on. Lucky Luciano, you know the story there. He had knocked off Mazzaria and uh, Maranzano, he got them both killed. You know, they were the old mustache Pete's. And he was kind of trying to usher in the new wave of the mob here in this country. As a matter of fact, he never even wanted to use the mafia anymore. He wanted to call it Cosa Nostra, which is the modern day mafia in this country. We call it Cosa Nostra. It's not the mafia anymore. You know, it means this thing of ours. And uh, so he convened this conference. Now, why did they convene it in Atlantic City? Well, there were a lot of reasons. Meyer Lansky was the one that told Luciano to convene it in Atlantic City, and it was mainly because of Nucky Johnson. He had such power and control there. You probably know who he is if you've watched Boardwalk Empire. He wasn't part of the mob, but he was a gangster in his own right, and he had tremendous clout in Atlantic City, tremendous political power. He was a politician himself. He controlled law enforcement. Nothing went on in Atlantic City unless it was approved or went through Nucky Johnson. He had that much power and control. And Atlantic City was really building up at that time, you know. It was the boardwalk city. They didn't have cars at that time. Everything was by rail. So they had a thought of building this beautiful resort area on the boardwalk at that point in time. Now, what made it so special? It was during Prohibition, but Nookie Johnson had so much power there. He said, hey, I don't care what's going on in the rest of the country. We're not going to have speakeasies here. We're going to sell alcohol right out in the open, in the hotels, in the bars. Speakeasies were going to be legal as far as he was concerned in Atlantic City. And he had that much power to make that happen. So people would travel by rail mostly from Philadelphia, New Jersey, of course, New York, all the surrounding states to go to Atlantic City to be able to have booze and girls and watch shows and everything else. And of course, walk the bar 
boardwalk. I think the boardwalk was like four miles long at that time. It was huge. And Nookie Johnson, like I said, he had total control over everything there. So when they were going to have this conference in the wake of the St. Valentine's Day massacre, they decided again at Maya Lansky's suggestion, probably mainly because of Nookie Johnson and what he controlled there, to call a conference of all the mob guys, the bosses from all over the country. And there are about nine or ten cities that got involved at that time. It was New York, New Jersey, of course, Cleveland, Florida, Louisiana. They all kind of came to convenes. As a matter of fact, they called it the Atlantic City Conference. And it was at that conference that Luciano, who headed it with Maya Lansky, uh, started to talk about the new organized crime in America, Cosa Nostra. He created the commission at that point in time. So the new wave of organized crime, Cosa Nostra, was actually born in Atlantic City. And you know, since Nookie Johnson had such weight and control during that time, I believe he had an influence, maybe even informing the commission. We haven't heard that before. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm just thinking, since he mainly hosted that and allowed it to happen in his city, and I believe he knew Maya Lansky, I think he may have had some influence on, you know, making this a business-like conference and convincing the guys that, you know, violence is no good anymore. We got to get along. And certain things happened at that conference that kind of set the tone for the new Cosa Nostra in America. And by the way, you know, a lot of people think the Appalachian Conference that happened later on in New York, that that was the first time all the mob bosses got together. Not true. The first time they ever got together was in 1929 in Atlantic City. This was the first time that all the mob bosses from all over the country convened in one spot. And, you know, at that time, I believe 40% of all the illegal alcohol that came into the United States came through Atlantic City. And Atlantic City was the hot spot at that point in time, no doubt about it. So what was discussed at this conference? And like I say, the birth of Cosa Nostra in America, the modern day Cosa Nostra. What was discussed? Luciano and Maya Lansky had this idea of almost, you know, making organized crime like a corporation. I mean, they wanted to stop the violence. They wanted to start to get away from it. And you know, the history up until that point, especially in Chicago, was so much violence with Capone. You know, it was told that even Capone, he made a remark to a, a newspaper reporter after that. He talked about the conference, believe it or not. I mean, back then they were talking about it out in the open. You imagine today everything's done undercover. But they talked about it right in the open. And he said, you know, this is a new beginning. We're all going to get together. We're going to stop the violence. We realize it's bad for business. I mean, Capone said that outright. But what did they discuss? Luciano kind of set the tone. He said, look, we can't be competing with each other, you know, for alcohol sales and so on and so forth. We all have an opportunity to make money. So they kind of made price controls. We don't want you undercutting us. We don't want to go to war. We don't want to be fighting over competitors. Let's just kind of have price control here. They actually did that. And I understand that. You know, I did that in the gas business. You know, I'll never forget when we had four gas stations, right? We would get a big intersection. There would be four gas stations, one on each corner. And I would buy one of them. And I'd get the other three gas station owners together. And I'd tell them, listen, whatever price you charge, I'm going to go under you at least one or two cents. That's it. I said, if you try to undercut me, I'll go down two cents more. If you keep going down, I'll go five cents more. If you keep going down, I'll go 10 cents more because I was working off the taxes they weren't, right? So I said, maintain your price. No, I'm going to be just slightly under you. That's just the way it is. And if you try to undercut me, I'm going to put you out of business. Well, that worked. I mean, they kept that. And eventually, they wanted to buy all that gas off of me anyhow. So, so I understood that. They understood back then that they had to maintain you know, a certain price and not try to undercut each other so that you did go to war and you did have problems. They also talked about not infringing on other people's territories. You know, if I'm in Cleveland, don't be coming over here, you know, from Detroit and trying to get my customers, you know, and the mob is not really, during my day, it wasn't really that territorial. We did work with other guys in different areas. Like if I had, you know, something in Brooklyn and it wasn't my area, if I had something in the Queens and it wasn't my area, I would go speak to whoever was you know, there locally, and I'd say, look, I got a deal. Maybe I can cut you in on it. So, you know, we respected one another uh, back then, but we weren't that territorial geographically. Business-wise, we were. Union-wise, we were. But territorial uh, geographically, really not that much. But they maintained that, and uh, they also said, look, Let's learn how to, to uh, infiltrate legitimate business and politicians. Nookie Johnson did extremely well here. Let's follow his lead. That was talked about there. So a lot of things went on, you know, in Atlantic City. And at one time, that was the hot spot. 
What killed Atlantic City was when FDR repealed prohibition. I think it was in 1933. And at that point in time, you know, speakeasies in Atlantic City, booze was sold everywhere now. So Atlantic City, you didn't have to go there just to get your alcohol. You know, you could do it legally anywhere. Plus, automobiles started to, uh, to be in practical use. So uh, people would go into Atlantic City, come right out. It wasn't like when they went by rail, they had to stay there for some time. So believe it or not, the onset of, uh, of cars kind of hurt Atlantic City also. When that happened, Nookie Johnson started to lose his control, lose his power. After a while, I think, you know, the feds got on to him. He was indicted, I think, for income tax evasion or something like that. Uh, he lost control, did some time in prison. The whole city started to go down. Vegas was on the rise. You know, all of the um, glamour of Atlantic City was really shifted to Las Vegas. That's actually what happened. Atlantic City never really recovered. I'll be honest with you, I was never thrilled with Atlantic City. I went there, you know, but I was never thrilled with it. It was never like the hot spot. It couldn't compete with Vegas, you know, even if everything was wonderful. Between the weather and just the atmosphere, it just wasn't the same. Vegas had it all over Atlantic City as far as I was concerned. And uh, so Atlantic City started to take a nosedive, and it got really bad there. I mean, it was, it was just bad. I mean, you know, depression and... A lot of homeless, a lot of poverty, um, and it's still never really fully recovered. Then I remember in 1978, they were trying to do everything. I think a couple of years before that, they had a Democratic National Convention there to try to bring tourism into the town. It didn't really work, didn't help. 1978, they opened up the first casino, and the mob had practically left Atlantic City because there was nothing there anymore. Uh, you know, no, no alcohol, no ritzy joints, nothing like that, so they left. And in 1978, the first casino opened. Opened, and I'll never forget Governor uh, Byrne at the time. He was out on the boardwalk and he made a statement. He said something like, uh, the filthy organized crime bosses or the organized crime bosses can never put their filthy hands in Atlantic City. Something like that. And uh, the irony in that is that uh, Nicky Scarfo, who was the boss of uh, Philadelphia at the time, and Phil Leonetti were a couple of blocks away watching him. And I think Scarfo make, made a remark to his nephew. He said, doesn't he realize we're already here? You know, so they already had their hands in, you know, some of the things that were going on there. Not huge business, but some of the things in the hotels and, and so on and so forth. So, and then Nicky Scoffa got in trouble and Leonetti, and that didn't last too long. And I think I one time told you, Nicky and I had gotten together. We were going to unionize the security guards in all the hotels in Atlantic City. And then I had my trouble, he had his, didn't work out, so we, we kind of left it alone. And then, you know, it went the way it went. So that's really it. So again, Atlantic City, the birthplace of Cosa Nostra because of the Atlantic City Conference and all the guys that had gotten together at that time, that's where it all began. That's where the National Commission was formed. So a lot of history with the mob in Atlantic City uh, going way, way, way back when. And yeah, I guess it is ironic that I'm gonna be there speaking on November 19th at Resorts Casino. So if you're listening, buy some tickets, come and see me. We're gonna have a great time that night, I promise you. Nobody will be disappointed, they never are. Whenever I speak, we have a great time. Uh, get your tickets, they are going fast. It's a big theater, but uh, tickets are going fast and I have a pretty good uh, feeling that we're gonna sell out. So, that's it for today. Anything else on the agenda? I am back now, I'll be honest with you, I'm trying to catch up after being away for two months in Europe and I've been, you know, just really running around, kind of running ragged. I got a very busy fall ahead of me, but hey, it's better than uh, not being busy, right? So better than the alternative. So thank all of you for always supporting me. You know, I appreciate it very much. Everywhere I go, I'm not kidding people, everywhere, even in the United Kingdom, all over the United States, upstate New York, people are saying, Michael, I see you on YouTube. I watch your YouTube channel. So again, thank all of you for that. We really appreciate it. And again, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. We're on a march to a million. You might be the winner of a huge, huge giveaway that they were, that we're gonna hold uh, when we do hit a million. So that's it for today. My friends, how do I always leave you? The same way, be safe. And I'm not going to give you this speech, but ladies, you know how I feel about that. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless all of you. Yes, I sincerely mean that. And yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.